I see a lot of people online complaining about how unfair McFarlane Jace figures are. No, no! And it really got me thinking, I got a bit of a unique perspective on this, being a collector, but also a store owner. So where do I fall on the chase figure spectrum? Are they a blight to toy collecting society or a necessary evil? Let's talk about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, often called Big Nerdy. Together, we are the NWO, the Nerd World Order. And this is Nerd! Before we get into the opinion stuff, let's kind of make sure everyone's on the same page with what a chase figure is. A chase figure is an alternate version of a figure that is short-packed, usually at random, to try to get people to get into the retailers more to have to actually hunt to find it. In the world of Tom McFarlane, we use colored labels to denote different types of chases. First, there's the gold label, which technically really isn't even a chase. A gold label is just a store exclusive. Often, gold labels are brand new figures that we've never seen before, Supergirl, mostly no at least, but sometimes they are just better versions of standard figures, like the gold label Bane that's got the cool trench coat, whereas the basic Build-A-Figure one does not. And then there's Platinum. These are harder to find, hence the chase. That's right, Platinum better than gold, not in the Olympics, so it didn't make sense to me. Generally, Platinum figures are often different alternate paint jobs. Sometimes it's from alternate storylines, sometimes it's more of a classic paint job. Back, nah, maybe a couple years ago, they used to do artist proofs, which were just gray versions, which sucked, because nobody wanted them. But now, generally, it's more of a classic look. Like, for example, Hawkman got a cool classic look. Everybody wanted that Hawkman. Wonder Woman, not everybody wanted it, but we did get that 1970s slash 80s coloring that a lot of people wanted to get. Then you also get colorings where it doesn't totally make the most sense, at least to me, like Steel. I don't know, that coloring on Steel is not what I'm used to. I did just get done watching the Reign of Superman movies, the cartoons with my kids, so it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, people are complaining about this. I hear a lot of words getting thrown around, like greed and scalper bait. Anyway, the demand for these alternate colors has really gone up, and of course that has brought out the worst in people. We're now seeing a lot of people like slam McFarlane regularly with things like this is corporate greed and you're just trying to help scalpers now. It's getting a little out of hand folks. It's time to lighten up their toys. And I also need to say this. Companies gotta make money. Toys are incredibly low profit market. But how much money you make? If they can figure out gimmicks to make a couple extra dollars here and there, they have to do it or the company's gonna sink and you'll have no toys to buy. No! God, please, no! Throughout the last few years where inflation's been sky high, McFarlane has been up until recently, the most price conscious toy manufacturer out there. They've consistently done a lot to keep their prices down. They have just started to raise them. They went from 20 bucks to 23 bucks. Yeah, I feel like going from, these guys are great, they're so left of the value, to they're trying to kill us by taking all our money. It's a bit of a stretch for me. Don't get me wrong. I remember when figures were five bucks a pop, and it wasn't that long ago. It was literally only like 20 years ago. I guess that's kind of long ago. Point being, things change. It sucks, but we got to get over it. The whole situation presents a bit of a unique situation for me as the retailer who's also a collector at heart because it's like, what do you do with these things? My goal is to be fair and to get these into people's hands who want them and not the people who are just going to flip them. So it's really hard to figure out how I want to go about putting these out to the world when I get them because I get usually one per case. So we get quite a few of these that we need to sell. The way I see it, we got five options on how to move these things. Here they are. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on them. Option one, just put them up at normal price with the other figures and say, how about, here's the problem with option one. There are people, whether you want to call them flippers or scalpers, and they are very good at this. They monitor websites all day long and they will buy them up in an instant at that price. And it's gone. And then resell them at a greater profit. So I don't think that makes much sense for me to do that. Option two is to do what Big Bad Toy Store does and sell them at a market. They generally sell them at $40 to $50, whatever the market really is. I could do this. I just feel kind of weird doing it because I know the feelings of like, people just don't feel right about it. They don't feel right buying it. And honestly, if I'm not paying more for it, I feel weird doing it. It's probably just a weirdness as a collector. I don't think it's wrong, but it feels dirty. I don't want to do it. So I haven't done it. But if I did it at too low of a markup, again, the same thing would happen as before. And some of you were probably saying, well, why not just get software to stop the scalpers? Trust me, if I had it, don't you think Walmart and Target would happen? Also, they don't even get it all to the same address. They have different PO boxes. They get different addresses. So they get it shipped to different 
different places. They use different credit cards. It's pretty much impossible to block. Okay, so we've knocked out sell at normal price and sell at markup as options I don't love. So let's go into some more options. The next option is what McFarland Toy Store does. And they say, hey, buy a case, you get a chase. And wow, that rhymes. That is freaking genius. No, seriously though, you buy like a case of a figure, they tell you, you'll get a chase, which there's supposed to be one per case. I would not be sending out cases without opening them though, cause just my luck, I'd send out a case to someone if I did this method and it wouldn't have the chase in there. That would suck. But anyway, that's a method I could go. But again, I feel like that is creating a certain amount of annoyance with consumers. Then there is the option that so many people tell me they wish I did and that they think it's the only fair way to retailers to do it. And I'm about to burst this bubble. A lot of people are like, you could just send them out at random. They're supposed to be chases at random, right? So just send them out to some whoever gets them, right? Okay, that is a thought. But guess what I see happening all over the internet and people bragging about in Facebook groups and whatnot. They are going on places like Amazon, Best Buy, Entertainment Earth that actually sell these and send out the chases at random and they're buying 30 of them. And guess what they do as soon as they get them all? They return everything that's not a chase. That's pretty crappy, man. I'm like, what do you think that does to McFarland in general? Sure, not on an individual level, the returns aren't hurting them. If you're in charge of purchasing toys at Amazon or you're just a corporate executive looking at the numbers and seeing the return rates, you're gonna order less McFarland. In fact, we're already in a bit of a cycle where McFarland is not getting ordered as much and you're seeing their figures sell out in places, even Nerdzoic, Big Bad, EE. We're selling out of them like in a day because the print runs are lower because the demand was deemed lower based on last year's sales. So when people do this, it's only gonna make it worse. Don't do that. But also that's why I'm not gonna, that. there's no chance I'm gonna send them out at random because it's just asking for unscrupulous people to do unscrupulous things. Which leads us to option five and it's the option that I've gone with at least for now and that is mystery boxes. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save all of my chases and I'm gonna put them in a mystery box. So, hey, here's three or so figures. You get a platinum, maybe a gold, and a standard, and it's 70 bucks or whatever. Right now, as I'm filming this, I have one going. It'll probably be over by the time this releases. Doing half and dates in my head. It'll definitely be over. But with this one, it's a little bit more expensive because out of the 20 boxes, six of them have autographed editions in there, which is a $50 MSRP. So the price is a bit higher than it would be for like a normal mystery box. So yeah, them be the options, as the kids would say. Not great answers anywhere with them, right? All of this to say, my opinion, what is it? Well, I actually have two opinions. I have the retailer opinion and I have the collector opinion. As a retailer, I like chases because it means that a case is not gonna be a complete dud. If you have a figure in there that is a dud, like some kind of second or third version of a character from a crappy DCU movie, you're gonna be able to recoup some of the fact that you're gonna have to sell it for five bucks by selling a chase at a higher amount, whether it's as a markup or a mystery box. It's a mystery box would allow you to get rid of the crappy figure as well, kind of the point. As a collector, I used to love them. Like, I used to love chases because it is what made the toy hunt fun. Part of coming around the corner and seeing everything and seeing if what you had is there, if it was a chase, it was that much better. I vividly remember it was Spider-Man Classic. So this is pre-Marvel Legends 2001, 2002. Me and my buddy Jonathan, we were looking for the yellow variant Daredevil and we looked high and low. I don't think we ever found it in a store, but the chase for that was awesome. Going target to target to target to target. Now though, it's kind of indifferent because the toy run has been dying slowly since Toys R Us died and going target to target now makes no sense. And it sucks because the thrill of coming around the aisle, like I said, seeing it, amazing. In fact, I think in some ways I'm trying to replicate that with a mystery box. Instead of coming around the aisle, you're opening the box and seeing what's in there. Anyway, I hope this was an interesting look behind the curtain of my craziness that is my mind. Let me know your thoughts on chase figures and platinums in general. Did my perspective change your opinion at all? Do you have a steadfast opinion? I want to hear about it in the comments. And remember, you gotta get old. You don't have to grow up. Just be cool and stay nerdy. Later!